Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. And as long as... I think that by pressing that button, I'm live on the internet. Of course, the countdown reached zero on the, the official video page, which means that I may have inadvertently induced one of those wacky five-minute delays that YouTube is yet to get back to me on in terms of an actual bug. And indeed, even though it looks like I am broadcasting, and I can confirm that by looking at my video page. Give me a second, I'll show you. Uh, here we go. Look, I'm broadcasting live. Sorry, the screen is so dim there. It's because I unplugged the uh, power, and so it automatically uh, toggled power settings. There I am live. Look at that. I'll press play because I have a Google Chrome extension which auto-pauses the video before it starts playing. That's me. Uh, a couple of seconds ago, showing you that. That's what I see. Uh, but what you see is this live event will begin in a few moments. So uh, I could sit here and babble inanely for the next five minutes or so in the hopes that eventually it will finally kick in. Hasn't gone live yet. <clears throat> this is fun to do, you know, when uh, you are uh, broadcasting live on YouTube and you know there are several bugs and you have to play talent, director, producer, all in one. And uh, when YouTube does not cooperate, it just makes it all that much more stressful. And then what's interesting too, when I refresh the uh, broadcast page where I can download the, the profile to stream, um, if I hit refresh on the page after I'm broadcasting, the other entries seem to disappear and it only shows me the current event that says I'm streaming live. And I've proven to you that I am indeed streaming it live. And we have 19 likes. I don't know how we have 19 likes before we even really started going. 20 now, all of a sudden. This is very bizarre. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what to say other than uh, I hope everybody's day is going well. That is a sincere, uh, I guess, that wasn't really a question. Um, it wasn't just a nicety. I mean, if your day is truly going well, mine, I, I'm happy. It's raining outside, and I think I'm the only person on the planet who actually enjoys rainy weather. And it's not just because it allows me to drink tea, which my girlfriend Diana made for me. Very, very nice of her. I came downstairs, she said, I made tea for you all, thanks. Because she knows I like sipping on uh, tea or some kind of lubricant. Not that, you know, I would sip a lubricant that wasn't designed to be sipped. That would just kind of be really kind of wacky. Uh, so the good news is uh, I'm still streaming live on uh, live.perillo.com. That's working just fine. Sometimes that even is a uh, buggy. Uh, but uh, today it seems to be going fine. Uh, let me go ahead and pop into stream settings here and see if that jogs anything. Like I said, it's, it's probably going to kick in right around the five minute mark. And uh, that's usually what's happened uh, when I uh, have this. And I'm sorry for wasting everybody's time. Uh, sorry that YouTube has to be a waste of everybody's time uh, when it, it doesn't let me do what it is that I should be doing. I guess the lesson is always start ahead of time. If I start before the countdown reaches zero, it seems to work just fine. Actually, here's, a, here's another question. Let me go to my channel page. Yeah, it says this live event will begin in a few moments when I'm not logged in. When I'm logged in, obviously, I can, I can see what it is that I'm streaming. They're really dinking around. Here's the, the thing that I hate about YouTube and Google. They don't let you talk to human beings. They, they refuse to, I think it's a mandate that you never let your human side show, which is probably one of the reasons why Google has failed at everything related to social in the past. Uh, and it remains to be seen whether or not uh, Google Plus will also be a, a failure in terms of social. But uh, Google hates to let you know that you're talking to a human being. They hate it. And so I've yet to get anybody's attention on this particular bug. Uh, and uh, it's good that not everybody is using it because they haven't addressed the problems yet. Uh, but it's bad because I have no idea five minutes into a broadcast if I'm going to be wasting my time 
doing a live broadcast on YouTube when no one's going to be able to watch it or if it's even recording. I have no idea if this is really going to be recorded. <sighs> but you, you get to hear my rants, at least, you know, ahead of time. Okay, we're at about the five-minute mark, and wow, what do you know? Magically, it starts working. I predicted it. It would start working around the five-minute mark, and indeed, it's now working. Thank you. Uh, and You know, I guess I, I did a video on this a, a while ago uh, saying that, you know, you got to be careful when it comes to beta products. Um, but uh, the five-minute mark is uh, seemingly the, the problem that we hit with YouTube Live if we do not start the broadcast ahead of time. So, just so you know, for future broadcasts, I will probably be starting a minute or two ahead of the scheduled time. Because if I don't do that, uh, then this is what happens. We waste five minutes of my life and potentially yours if you're watching this video after it's gone live. If you watched it to this point, five minutes in, the word is carrot. Okay, well, uh, hopefully remember a word by the end of the show so I know that you've watched this far in. If you feel me with this live TLDR episode, just type in carrot somewhere in a comment and I'll see it. I'm like, oh, they watched at least five minutes into the broadcast, if not longer and Hopefully they do. And for those of you who are watching live, thanks uh, again for joining us. I said it already, but you didn't hear me. Sorry, okay, I gotta calm down. I know, a little frustrated. Take a little sip of my calming down juice. I don't know what the hell this is. I think it has caffeine though, so it's probably not doing me any favors, but I still think it's delicious. Oh, someone says they're uh, dialing in from Portugal. Uh, all the way in the UK, thank you for staying up late. I'm kind of like late night. For those of you in the uh, UK and America here, we have these late night programs. I guess I'm like that for you on uh, that side of the pond. Let's uh, go ahead and get rocking and rolling. Uh, I've got a few things we want to cover, some interesting things, I'd hope. Uh, and so with that, feel free to read along with me. Uh, check out the links in the description. Uh, and you can click along. We're going to first cover the story on LockerGnome.com, Five Robots You Can Own. Okay? Are you reading the article? Are you plus wanting it? Are you liking it? Are you sharing it? Thank you, if you are. And you should be doing that anyway. And I've explained why before. So let's go ahead and do a video now. We are not yet at a time in human history where we could have robots roaming about uh, our homes or the streets, really, because we're limited by expense. Uh, and we had this conversation with the guy who designed and, and created R2-D2 a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys had caught that interview. We'd uploaded this series of questions and answers to our YouTube channel, and I'm assuming that since you subscribe, you saw them. And it, it's not so much a, a technical hurdle as much as it is a, a, a cost hurdle. So when we crafted this article on LockerGnome.com today, uh, and it was uh, skillfully written by Matt Ryan, a geek uh, to uh, really, uh, I, I would say, end all geeks. I don't think it gets any geekier than Matt. Actually, it probably does, but uh, he's, he's pretty geeky. I thought I was geeky, but he's, he's got me beat because he does role-playing games and has multi-sided uh, dice, and I don't. Uh, five robots, you can own. You can have these robots. And, and you may be thinking, well, they're so expensive. They'd be millions of dollars. No, not really. In fact, you today can buy a robot for research, or maybe just because you wanted to mess around with it, in conjunction with an open source platform for, I think the baseline is $8,000. And you're freaking out. $8,000? You know, as far as robotics go, that's kind of cheap. It really is. And you can even get one that will walk and will have a, an articulate face for just a few thousand more. Fifteen thousand dollars. I learned about this particular robot uh, on, uh, I think it was, was it some, like, it was a Google Plus share. And I was like, wow, that's really affordable. Consider that, you know, robotic research can cost a lot of money. Sometimes you need a good starting point. And if that starting point is relatively speaking, not a lot of money, then you're good. I mean, you don't need to spend as much money building that infrastructure to develop robots. Robots will get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. You're shocked today. Oh my goodness. It's really not 
that much in the grand scheme of robot things. But say you want a robot that's just a tiny bit more affordable. Well, have you thought about going with Lego? You may have seen a few uh, videos that have been circulating on uh, the internet uh, and, and there are people who build these little uh, robots out of the Mindstorms kit. Uh, the NXT 2.0, that's the current version. Uh, you could use uh, your, your skills as a builder, someone who loves Lego, and combine that with software that you can run to make that robot do whatever it is that you can program it to do. There's someone out there, and I did share this on, uh, I think I shared the animated GIF on Google+, who had taken a Mindstorms kit and set it up in conjunction with an Android phone and has it solving Rubik's Cubes. It's insane. You could do that. I mean, theoretically. Could you do that? Uh, most human beings, probably not. Uh, it takes a you know, really skilled mind to do something akin to that, at least with today's uh, tools uh, and uh, you know, technical hurdles. And, and robots will certainly become easier to use and, and more user-friendly. Uh, there, of course, is the MakerBot Thingomatic. You might remember a couple years ago, uh, we had Brie Pettis at Gnome Dex and did a whole, uh, I guess it, it's a video that's now on our YouTube channel. If you search for Brie Pettis, uh, who is, I guess he's another geek to end all geeks. He's geekier in a completely different way and a nice guy too. Uh, so there's a handful of robots you can get today and you could either take these robots, do more things with the robots, or you can just enjoy the robots uh, for what they are. You know, whether it's something like Hanson's Robokine, which is the robot that I was referring to earlier, uh, or something that you construct out of Lego in conjunction with their Mindstorms kit, or maybe it's something like uh, the, the MakerBot Thingomatic, or the other robots you could have today that we outlined in the article on LockerGnome.com. If you, I, I'd imagine you are interested in robots. If you are a geek, you have to love robots. Some people think I'm a robot because I never sleep, and I do sleep, but I do share information uh, all the time on uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, and beyond. Robots is for Android OS, not iOS, says Habit Tovar. Actually, that's not true, and I proved that with another video uh, that I had uh, uh, interviewed a, a kid at a local gadget event. He had created a way for a, an iPhone to react to music and now pictures. So it's not a limitation of a, a platform, really. It's a limitation on potentially your creativity once you have it in the budget. So uh, what do you think? Robots? Yay? Nay? You want one? If so, why? If not, why not? I mean, we have the three laws of robotics already, right? Works for me. Success, watching this from my Android phone. Oh, that's weird. The R2-D2 from Astromech. Well, he is an Astromech. Thank you, by the way, for the likes. Appreciate that on the live video feed. And I can also see, when I look at the page, uh, we have a lot of tweets and shares and likes and plus ones for that Robots You Can Own article. Thank you. Uh, here's another one we're going to do. Um, on a 17 inch, 17.3 inch laptop. Take a look at the link in the show notes there, lockergnome.com. It's the review for the Toshiba Satellite L775D-S7340. Holy cow, dude. What is this? I, I, do I need to take math class in order to figure out which laptops you're selling me? All right. Anyway, read along with the article and, and share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. That's right. I'm getting angry. Not enough of you are sharing. You're watching me and passively going, I'm just going to enjoy Chris. He doesn't need my like. He doesn't need my shares. Actually, I do. I do. You, I, I cry myself to sleep at night when you don't share. You know, when you don't share an article that you read on LockerGnome.com, I have it on good authority that God kills a puppy. Just saying. I don't think you want the, the puppy's blood on your hands, but if you do, eh, it's up to you. All right, let's move along with the next video. We all need new computers. Well, maybe not right now, but inevitably we will 
likely replace the computers that we're currently using today with new computers and potentially different computers altogether. And uh, we don't really have uh, a lot of opportunity to review the array of computers that are out there. We don't have a review lab. We're not a massive media company. It's just a handful of us with Locker Gnome. So we generally will review the things that we buy, such is the case with Ron over on LockerGnome.com in the corresponding article, his review of the Toshiba satellite. And I have to look at this model number. It's got 10 digits, not including the dash. The L775D-S7340. That's like the length of a phone number, dude. Okay, well, apparently the L775D-S7340 was a laptop that Ron wanted. And you know how big the screen is? Take a guess. And, and you know, you're, you're welcome to look at the, the article's full title in the description. Okay, spoiler alert. 17... 0.3 inches. Uh, that is longer, I think, than the average baby when it's born. That's nuts. I mean, you want to talk about a desktop replacement, that has to be it. The L775DS7340. We all have different wants and different needs. What's best for me is not necessarily best for you. Uh, but it's nice when we use our own dollars to pay for things because we're buying it based on our needs. And when we share our perspectives with you, it's not because we have an array of review devices because we really don't. And I know so many of you are inclined to say, oh, you must get review devices all the time. No, we, we really don't. Uh, we buy these things outright. So this 17.3 inch laptop from Toshiba as fully reviewed in this article was purchased for $529. Actually, $529.99. Tax, really not including. 6.2 pounder. This thing's gigantic. I think that thing's bigger than me. I know I weigh more than, way more than six. I could stand to lose uh, 6.2 pounds. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are amazing choices in the marketplace. And when you read a review online, keep in mind, did the person buy it themselves or was it a review unit? In some cases, when it's a full-on review, uh, that can and should change your perspective on the matter. Uh, and I've shared that, uh, you know, when we received review units and my experiences with them. And I've also shared when I've purchased items outright and my experiences with them. So at least you know when something is a review unit that was sent to us. And in many ways, with hardware, you gotta send it back. Uh, when you buy it outright, well, it's yours. And whatever you say as someone who's purchased an item means much more to me than if you were given the item or you're reviewing the item as a review unit. And I would say the same for you if you're watching a, a video review of something like, well, how is this product attained? Who is actually using it? Who bought it? What's their perspective? I mean, that just, it's so much more weight in the value of a review. And we try to do that with Locker Gnome articles. So uh, you may be interested in a product that weighs, let's see here, 6.2 pounds. It runs Windows because it is a, a PC from Toshiba that costs far less than $600 before tax, at least. That's insane. Laptops are getting so cheap these days for what you get. And you get an insane amount. And it's every, what more would you need in a computer? Big screen, got a webcam built in, it's fast, it was affordable. Computing these days is so, I would say, cheap. And it's not that there are a lot of expensive options out there, it's just there are a lot of cheap options, which of course make the items which cost more than the cheap items look expensive. They're not expensive, it's just everything else is, is cheap. And you know what? Uh, Ron's dollars count. So when you buy something, I think you owe it to the world to let people know what you think about that product. You really do, and it doesn't take much, whether you, you post it to Twitter, you post follow-up comments in a blog post. You make your own blog post, Google+, a, a video review on YouTube. Uh, 
you know, I do my best at when I bring something new into my home office, I like doing some kind of video about it, yeah, generally speaking. And it tends to be gadgety and uh, or gadgety, gadgetry. Well, I guess gadgety would work. I say it tends to be gadgetry or gadgety in nature. Giggity. Uh, so you could easily parlay that purchase into intelligence for the rest of the world, and not just when you bought it, right when you bought it. Use it for a while, uh, and then share your opinions on it. So th those are just some of my thoughts in conjunction with this particular review. You're looking for a new laptop. This may be the one for you. Then again, it may not, because maybe you want something that has an 18-inch screen, at which point 17.3 inches would seem small. Although in which universe it would seem small, I would, I'd be interested in finding out who thinks that's that small, but it's not the size that matters. Happy with Alienware, says Inbalanced by Design. Uh, Chris is a YouTube partner. Partners can live stream. Thank you for answering the questions, by the way. When people are asking questions that I've already answered, if you guys answer them in the comment thread, that's very helpful to me. And you know what else is helpful? The 113 likes we have in the video. Did we get 113 shares for that review of the Toshiba? Did we get 100? No. We only got 25. Oh. Do you guys not like PCs? Maybe you guys just don't like me talking about PCs. You don't like... You don't like articles on robots either? Okay, maybe. Okay, so no more robot content because you're not sharing that. No more PC content because you're not sharing that. Wow, okay. Uh, I don't know where else we can go from here, to tell you the truth. Uh, but if unless you like the content, we don't know what you like. We need you to share. We need you to read. We need you to click. It's not just this live video. Go beyond. Otherwise, we'll stop writing about them because, like, well, no one wants to hear anything about PC articles, so I guess we're going to stop talking about them. Ooh, someone's watching on the Kindle Fire picture, or it didn't happen. You already sell your Mac Mini, that live stream on YouTube. No, not, I, well, I think I might. I think I got to, as best as I can get is, like, $250 plus shipping and handling, possibly. I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get that much for it, which is kind of sad. What do you actually use your iMac for? Uh, a variety of tasks that I don't really want to share on the live video feed. Plus, it's always nice to have an extra computer around. I mean, I don't think anybody ever I have too many computers. Who has ever complained about that? Can you invent a system where we vote about what you speak about? Uh, 123 Mache, the best way to do it is to vote with your sharing. I mean, just share the articles on Facebook, Twitter, and beyond. And so no more robot content, no more PC content. Got it. Anything else you guys don't want? Let's see about audio and video gadgets uh, that uh, we use every day. It doesn't really take a lot of money to uh, create a very good experience in audio or video. Granted, uh, when it comes to audio and video equipment, it seems to be that the more you spend on something, the better quality you might receive. That's not always true, though. Uh, you, you might remember years ago when I used Canon's GL2 to live stream my home office, uh, the quality was really bad, and it was bad for a, a lot of different reasons. I could have done better, certainly, uh, but I was doing the best with the tools that I had at my disposal. Uh, this camera is a better camera. Uh, the audio that I'm using now, at least in conjunction with this very simple microphone, uh, is, I, I think, a little better than the audio that I was recording years ago with a camera that would have been argued was a better camera. It was a television-quality camera. But you don't have to spend a lot of money to have good audio and video production. So we listed out on the article on LockerGnome.com top five audio and video gadgets that we use every single day. And uh, you're free to agree or disagree. And here's the thing. Uh, we share these Locker Gnome articles uh, if, if you don't go to LockerGnome.com and comment and share and tweet and like all the articles you see over there, we don't know what you want. So based on today's usage, nobody wants me talking about PCs. Nobody wants me talking about robots. And depending on how many people actually like and share the article about audio and video equipment, it will seem that we'll see how many people want me talking about audio and video equipment. That's the only way we know you guys want to hear what we have to share. 
So uh, Matt's listed off some of his favorites. Uh, I, I got to tell you, even though it's not perfect, I've been pretty happy with this la uh, lav mic, uh, or lavalier, lav for short. It's an Audio-Technica ATR3350. I'm going to have to like commit that to memory because people ask like what mic I'm using right now, and it's, it's fine. It's, it's good. The only thing that uh, I would say is uh, a bit frustrating is that I don't have a true limiter right now. So sometimes if I get really, really loud uh, and the gain is, is not set according to uh, my average speaking pattern, it can uh, pop. You'll hear pops in the audio, and that's what's happening essentially. There's too much audio, and it can't handle it. There's no limitation. So that being said, uh, this only cost me like 20 bucks. This, this mic right here. It's a cheapie, but it works. You don't need to have massively expensive equipment. I also have the Rode mic, which sits... Pardon me, atop the camera. Let's see here. Let me just pop it off here. Maybe. Sorry, I'm like, as I'm doing this, you're moving around. How you doing? Second. I wasn't expecting I'd pull this off, but I just want to show you. Uh, the road mic, which I talked about in an earlier video. Uh, this is it. And it's a nice microphone. Uh, it's, uh, I, I, I have used it before, and it does work well. The challenge with using this during a live TLR broadcast is when I'm recording the video, the fan from the computer that I'm using to record the video on because it's convenient for me to use here starts kicking in. And so that this microphone is so good it picks up the fan noise. In fact, this mic is probably also picking up the fan noise, but not as much as this particular mic would be picking up the fan noise. Um, you know, I've tried different equipment, expensive equipment and cheap equipment, and ultimately, if it produces something of quality where people are asking what are you using then i know i'm using the right equipment uh i have used uh you know uh, the video recording capabilities on my iphone whether it was the 4 or the 4s and people have asked what camera are you using because it was done that well uh, the 4s has an outstanding video camera uh, built in with optical image stabilization I is it as awesome as what you might find in a dslr well it depends uh, I may use my DSLR for video recording sometimes and not other times. Uh, when would I use it? Uh, when uh, I'm, I'm taking a static shot and I can focus in on the subject. When would I not use it? If I plan on moving around or the subject's moving around because then I could not get, uh, 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 I couldn't change the focus as easily. So, uh, you know, it just really depends on what it is you might be using uh, at the time. Uh, which equipment you would want to use for that particular session. So it's nice to have all these options. Matt goes on and you know talks about uh, Samsung's HM3500 Bluetooth stereo headset, uh, a Vixia HFR20, which of course is from Canon. Uh, the camera used for this particular recording is the uh, Canon HV40. This was a gift, by the way, from uh, YouTube last year. I was going to tell him. I use the Canon HV30 for the live video feed at live.perillo.com. I am surrounded by uh, a lot of audio and video equipment. You could use a webcam if you wanted to. Uh, webcams generally do not produce amazing quality. I mean, especially if you're talking about Logitech. Logitech has awesome hardware, but they need to fire every single software engineer they have working for Logitech. They can't develop software worth anything. This is pretty much worthless. Uh, any Logitech webcam I've ever used is pretty much worthless because of the software, especially on Mac OS X. Don't even waste your money on Logitech's uh, hardware with Macs. I'm sure it works well with Windows, but on Mac OS X, yeah, not so much. It's, it's pretty bad. It's Logitech software is skanky. You can quote me on that, too. So, uh, yeah, you can cheap out sometimes and still get good quality, or you can cheap out and get crappy quality. Check out product reviews. Let us know what you think about our budgetary conscious guide, or uh, our, our list of uh, really affordable audio and video gadgets that can help you get the job done. The article again, LockerGnome.com. Oh, I'll just put that on later. Sorry if I was juggling the uh, the uh, uh, the camera there as I was uh, kind of. Switching things around. What kind of printer would be best for you? Did you guys like it? Did you like the article? Let's see if you guys want me to do any more of these kind of articles here. Uh, no, not a lot of you liked or shared it.
So apparently no more... God, what am I going to talk about here? You guys don't like robots. You don't like PCs. You don't like audio and video stuff. It, it's hard to guess, really, what you want. If you don't like these things, if you don't share them. Okay, okay, moving along. Johnny Boy Live says, I usually watch unboxings and reviews before a purchase. Unboxings don't do anything for me. Reviews do. Unboxings, I still don't see the point. Oh, look, it's cardboard. Styrofoam. Bag. How that has any bearing on the quality of the product, I have no idea. You barely hear me. You should hear me. You should hear me just fine. I can see on my levels that the microphone is just fine. You may need to turn up the volume, per se, but unless I start topping out, there's no way in hell I can adjust this thing. Because remember, I do not have a limiter. And I'm also trying to decrease the amount of fan noise that you might hear during the video recording. So, kind of balance between the two. <clears throat> nice sweater jacket thing. Well, thank you. I tend to share af articles after the broadcast as I thought it might be rude not to pay attention to you, says Peter Doa1. No, do it anytime, dude. Doesn't matter. But thank you for, for, for saying that. Um, thank you for paying attention. <laughs> actually, I think you're... There are a few of you who actually would admit to doing that, but you can share it anytime. I love it. You can't hear a computer fan? Trust me, it's there. And now there's not so much of a fan. I know what I'm talking about. Turn up your hearing aid. <laughs> of course, I don't think you were talking to me. I don't have a hearing aid yet. What would be the best printer for you? I'm about this close from creating a t-shirt that says, best is relative. And then maybe on the back saying, better is relative. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been saying this for God knows how long. I, actually, I don't even know if God knows how long I've been saying it. He should. He's omnipotent. So uh, we've got a, a question to throw out there. And we've written this in conjunction uh, with uh, the video that I'm recording right now. What kind of printer would be best for you? And I've owned a lot of printers over the years. In fact, I have a, a couple extra printers that I, I probably don't even need anymore. Uh, there are a lot of features in printers these days that uh, I think would make compelling upgrades from what you're using right now. I, uh, the first printer I remember getting uh, was, this was years ago. Actually, I never owned myself a dot matrix printer. You know, eh, 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 eh. That was my impression of a dot matrix printer. Some of you never knew that sound. You'd have to go to YouTube to look for what printers used to sound like. The first printer I owned myself was a, what they called a bubble jet. And, uh... It was nice, but I I was so frustrated because, I mean, not, not only was the ink pricey, but inevitably I would end up printing the page out several times over because uh, the registration was always off. Like, I would print out a page and the font would be jaggy and it, not very high quality, and I tried higher quality paper and still that didn't help. It was just a, it was a good enough printer for the time, but ultimately I decided, you know, I, I want a quality printout. And so I purchased my first laser printer for about, $300, $400, and used it for a number of years. It was actually a, uh, like a feed, it was a scanner, not a flatbed, but a, a feed scanner, and also a, just a black uh, toner-driven uh, printer. No color printing, or, and I was willing to sacrifice it because I didn't really print out a lot of photos. Uh, my needs were primarily uh, text. I'd print out an email or a document. I just wanted it to be clean the first time out. And generally speaking, that served me well for a number of years, and I stuck with laser printers as primary printers up until really this past year when I swapped out for a higher quality uh, ink-based printer, uh, namely because uh, there were certain features that it had that I, I used. Uh, a, an, a fee, an auto document feeder, flatbed scanner for when I need to, to scan those documents. Um, didn't use a lot of ink and still it was a high enough quality output that I didn't have to reprint things. Uh, it, it worked really, really well. Uh, the ink, by and large, pretty affordable. 
especially when I need to get new ink, you know, that's when you realize, oh my God, I'm, I spent way too much on ink in this printer. And I'm not a big believer in refilling uh, inks, uh, like the cartridges. That's sloppy. And to me, I just, just buy a new one and, you know, pick a printer that doesn't cost a lot. Uh, and the ink doesn't cost a lot to when you need to refill it. Uh, but I think the, pr the printer feature that I wanted most was the wireless capability. Uh, and even though uh, the software is not fully compatible with uh, everything that I need it for, for instance, uh, the iOS platform, uh, if you have a compatible printer on your network, can allow you to print wirelessly from any supporting app. Unfortunately, HP, Epson, and a lot haven't played catch up. They, they, uh, they still rely on their own software on iOS to print things to wirelessly. Kind of sucks, but uh, I can print wirelessly from my desktop computers with a great degree of ease. It networks through wireless, the wireless network and does everything I need it to do. And I don't have to have it connected by way of USB or tethered to any particular machine or even connected directly to the network by way of uh, a cable. It's, it's a wireless printer. And I got to tell you, once you go with a wireless printer, it's kind of hard to turn back. I mean, you, you may send a lot of data, you know, to the printer to, you know, what depends on, you know, what your use case is, right? Remember what I said at the top of the video, better and best is relative, uh, but you may need some help in winnowing down the variety of options that are out there and answering the question for you, what kind of printer would be best for you? And, and maybe you don't know yet. And that's, that's probably a scarier thought. If you've never had a printer, this, guide this outline that we've compiled for you on lockernome.com the link is in the description should help break it down to help you decide should you go with an ink driven printer something that uh, is a laser printer and, and laser printers these days you'd think oh they're expensive they, they are more expensive than ink printers but uh they're they're not that much more and you can get color and they're fast in in many ways energy efficient far more than they used to be when i bought my first laser printer and I still love the, the, the quality of a laser uh, printout. Oh, it's sharp. Uh, but of course, if you do a lot of photos, probably not gonna go with a laser printer. But if you just do a lot of text and intermittently, maybe you would go with a laser printer. There's a lot of decisions you have to go through to find what's best for you. And you know, like I said, I think you'd be very good uh, to, uh, or in a better position, I should say, if you do your research before you just buy what someone at the store tells you is best for you. You know what's best for you. Take advantage of uh, the information that we continue to provide for you on LockerGnome.com if you have similar questions. Feel free to ask and we may... That's not how you... My dog just a asked me in Morse code. Did you? Can anyone translate that? I have no idea if that even the mic even picked up. People are saying that I was quiet, but I don't. I shouldn't be. The mic is about as high as it was before. Of course, if I talk directly, if I, how about I do the whole next video with me talking into my nipple? <laughs> oh, I could always move the mic around. Let's see here. Let's see if this does any better here. All right, we're maneuvering the mic. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Just doing one of the live production things that I'm prone to do. And I know there's a 3D printer out there. True, printers are dead in the consumer market if you use cloud-based services. Eh, yes and no, I print out a lot. In fact, I needed to make a copy today of my driver's license to sign a, a mortgage refi, which I'm very, very happy about. Backlink of the day. All right, let's talk. Oh, yeah, well, I don't need to record a separate video. Uh, but L-I-J Robert, Liege Roberts Review .blogspot com. the link is in the description for this video. Uh, and it looks like he linked to our article on how to update Facebook and Twitter with Siri. So thank you for the backlinks. Uh, we certainly do appreciate them uh, more than you know, uh, because that's, that's really how things kind of go and flow. Uh, let's see here. You sounded fine on my Logitech 5.1 surround sound. Boy, that's kind of freaky because this is just mono. It's, you want to talk about a waste. I'm sorry. Audio is now worse. Oh, come on. How could that make it worse? Really? You know, I, I've, I've learned not to trust comments sometimes. <laughs> like, cause I, I can't tell if it was worse or better. See, this is the problem. I should have just left it there.
Can I help you, Wicket? Are you done communicating? By shaking? You nut. Can I do this now? Can I finish my, my show? Well, don't just look at me with a blank stare. All right, fine. Get up here. Come on. Okay. Get up. Don't, don't just come here. Oh. <laughs> ah. Okay, don't touch the mic. All right. Let's uh, see if we can answer a few more questions. Uh, Milky Sounds 109 says, Chris, you are fine. Do not worry about it. Great. Lame says, IT wins web show one. Lame. The problem is, is if they just t like type one word, I don't understand. Like, what's the reference? Wicket, stop. Okay, Wicket, if you're going to be up here, you're going to have to play by my rules. I know his paws are definitely sliding. <laughs> well, Wicket, you don't have to. Just, okay, let's read the questions here. Ready? Read the questions. 3D, 3D, 3D monitors are a waste, says H.T. Keenan. I agree. I would never buy a 3D monitor today. That may change in another 10 years. Will Bing die? Ask SoxFan 105. Uh, I, I think it, I use Bing all the time. I like Bing. I Bing things on Google. Really? You do, Wicket? That's great. Any other questions you'd care to answer? Uh, don't look at me, dude. Just watch. The, no, don't. I know what he was licking earlier. It's not exactly something that I would want on my nose <laughs> or up it. <clears throat> Do you want to read one more question, then I can move on with my life now that I've given you time? Yeah, actually, I think you were going to review a comment on anyway that someone just asked. So I'm going to let you answer the question in a video. And Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> You're doing a horrible job at the ventriloquism, Chris. Yeah, well, I never promised uh, that I would do this well. Are you okay? Are you are you going up or down? Wicket's a little uh, upset. Uh, he learned that today Yahoo got a new CEO. Um, and uh, this is something I wanted to talk about anyway in the live video feed on uh, YouTube during the TLDR broadcast, the Locker Gnome Daily Report. Noi Hillel asked, do you think Yahoo will die? And uh, this really upset Wicket a lot because he is really the only person I know that still uses Yahoo. Uh, and I, I admittedly use parts of Yahoo. I, I can't remember visiting yahoo.com at any point over the past five years. Uh, the only thing that I, I think I really use in Yahoo's family is Flickr. And even that is uh, fleeting usage, since now I'm sharing on Instagram, uh, you know, Facebook, Google+, all the photos uh, that I, I post. Um, Wicket doesn't want to see Yahoo die. And even with a new CEO at the helm, uh, Yahoo is, uh, they're, they're in trouble. Uh, you know, and I, I could hope that uh, uh, one day uh, either Yahoo will turn itself around, and that's a, it's going to take a long time, um, or potentially be acquired. And uh, who would acquire Yahoo? Well, you could say, well, Google could acquire Yahoo. Well, what, what does Yahoo have that Google doesn't already have? Uh, Microsoft could acquire Yahoo. Well, that is true. They could. I mean, Microsoft has a nice suite of online services and could stand to have a few more. Uh, you know, really, I, I think uh, there's a huge value in the Yahoo brand. Uh, and, uh, and even Fiddler Pig notes here in the comment stream, Yahoo Mail is pretty good. It actually did improve over time. Uh, I don't know if I would use it as my default mail provider. I recorded a video as to why. I would say the same thing about Hotmail and Gmail, too. Um, you know, it, I think Yahoo's only possibility for surviving is, is acquisition. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, uh, it's going to die. and I don't think the world would let it die. Um, maybe the acquisition will be from AOL. Is, is that a possibility? God, I, oh, that would just be, that would almost be like adding insult to injury at this point. Um, it'd be difficult to say 
what's going to happen? Uh, you know, what is it going to take for Yahoo to turn around? You know, they, they've tried over and over again. They've released a, a lot of services. And, uh, you know, for a while there, Yahoo was just kicking ass and taking names. I mean, they had Flickr and Delicious. I mean, these two were the uh, poster children for uh, what Web 2.0 uh, was in the very beginning. And that was one of the reasons why Yahoo acquired these two services. But you don't really hear much about Flickr uh, these days, other than possibly through, uh, you know, from professional photographers who may have already moved on to other photo services, or uh, Delicious, which is now uh, owned by the people who started uh, YouTube, if you didn't know that. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I can't imagine, though, that with the brand presence that Yahoo has, that it would just die. Someone will acquire it. And it may be for pennies on the dollar, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that's how this is going to end. Someone will acquire Yahoo, and it, it may be just this new CEO stepping in to get that stage set for um, a, an acquisition that you know would not disappoint shareholders. You know, and, and you got to keep in mind, I've been uh, certainly aware of Yahoo since before it was Yahoo.com. I remember when it had a tilde in the URL. That's when I first. Uh, found out about Yahoo as an internet directory. Very simple. Uh, and that's that's the Yahoo that I knew way back in the day. Oh, such a long time ago. Uh, hard to believe, though. Uh, they, they've survived this long, uh, but I don't know what will happen uh, from this point. You guys probably have different thoughts on the matter, if you even use Yahoo or any of Yahoo's services at all. If so, which parts of Yahoo do you still use? Uh, S4MTW says, what about Yahoo Answers? People still use it. That may be the stronger part of uh, Yahoo there. Uh, Blitz, or I say Bits Broadcasting says, the majority of people who I see using Yahoo are older people. I'm not even sure younger people like me even knows that Yahoo even exists. That may be true. Uh, you know, there are a lot of resources out there, and, you know, even with a strong brand like Yahoo, at least you knew what I was talking about, or assumedly you knew what I was talking about, uh, that's not enough these days. You know, if, you, if you're not doing something better than everybody else, people are fickle. They're going to move on. If someone did things better than YouTube, and if YouTube had enough of a, a pain point, people would move on from uh, using YouTube. You may not think that possible. I would never have thought it possible with Yahoo, but, you know, time changes everything. Okay, Wiki, are you done? Can I, can I, can I go? Can I, can I finish? Can, can I finish? Can I, can I, can I? I use my reminders app to remind me to plus one and tweet at least two articles and two videos a day. The Josh Vasquez, you are an outstanding member of our community. Thank you for your support. You have no idea how much that means to us. We, 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 we watch and monitor all these things. We do. Ow! Keep, <laughs> I think my jeans are too tight. I just squished my nuts. <sighs> Much better. Okay. <laughs> Had to accommodate some things. My manhood there. <clears throat> Lockernome.net versus Yahoo Answers. Lockernome.net wins. Of course I was going to say that. You must be busy. Mm. Actually, just water. Pour hot water in there. It'll dilute it. No tea. No tea. The tea is perfect there. It's, 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 more, it's perfect. Thank you. Yay! My audience. Actually, I force her to sit here with me. It's painful, really, for her. Uh, do you think the DMV will become controlled completely by robots? Says 2656G money. I'd like to see that. Ugh. What is your Instagram name? Chris Perillo. I got a plus one add-on for Chrome. Awesome is BM666. And in fact, I think we featured that, didn't we? Chris, do you plan on doing these live shows until when? Says Upgraded Gnome. Okay, hang on. Chris, you plan on doing these live TLDR, the Locker Gnome Daily Report, broadcasts until when? This was a question asked by a user known as Upgraded Gnome today during uh, the live broadcast of TLDR, the Locker Gnome Daily Report. Also, too long, didn't read. The humor did not escape us. Uh, we plan on doing this 
for the foreseeable future. The reaction has been good. Uh, but the thing about doing this is we need you. Uh, we need you and the people that you know. Uh, I would like to see within a year's time uh, double the amount of people tuning in on a daily basis to watch the live show and then possibly even watching the show after it's been recorded and certainly the separate segments from there. So we're doing this. Uh, this is a television show. Uh, you know, what? Television? Where, where can I see it on television? You watch it wherever, dude. I don't care. You can watch it on a real TV set, piece of hardware, or on a, a smaller screen. It doesn't matter. Television is, a, to me, anymore an ethereal concept. But the idea of scheduling this live broadcast is pretty much now part of our daily routine. And barring any scheduling hiccups, it will be every weekday at 3 p.m., Pacific, okay? Get it into your calendar. Grain that in your own, oh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Pacific. And you can see the countdowns for every one of the live shows if you look at our channel page, youtube.com slash lockernome. So now, how we're crafting the content, it's, it's largely based on what we're creating on lockernome.com. So if you want to see more kind of content one way, shape, or form, you have to let us know. And we see based on the amount of traffic we get to articles on lockernome.com, uh, the amount of comments an article receives, the amount of plus ones, the amount of Facebook likes, the amount of tweets or retweets. And based on all these metrics, we know what you want. That's the only way we're going to know what you want. This is the, the, we don't have any other ratings system in place. We are going to know more about you based on what you do with us. This is not just, thank you, honey. This is not just about us broadcasting directly to you. This is interactive. I need your comments, your shares, your plus ones, your likes every day. This, this isn't once a week, every single day. The news just does not stop coming in. We need your questions. We need that. And it's more than just you. It's the people you know. And that's why it's important to share because it helps us get a better idea of what you want, what you don't want. Because see, if we did something and nobody looked or nobody clicked the Locker Gnome article for it, we'd think you guys don't want to hear it again. And you may want to hear it again, but if you don't plus one, if you don't share, if you don't like, we don't know. We can't read your mind. And I, 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 I want to underscore this again and again. We need you to interact with us. This isn't just me being a talking head. I am seeing the comments in the live TLDR stream. Is he live? Asks Bilak Kopinsk 666. And you got no commercials in this TLDR. That's better than regular television, says Airwolf 28. 6 p.m. Eastern, says Sky Babylon 1. 10 a.m. for Aussies. 11 p.m. for people in the UK. I'm interacting with you live and you interact with us whether you can comment during the live stream or you plus one and share and comment on the articles that we're producing on lockernome.com or sharing on google plus or facebook or twitter this is the future guys i don't you okay for years content publishing you know had been you get what we send you and forget feedback. And then we evolved to the, the idea of two-way communications with content. And, and blogging sprang out. And that's kind of where you know, I would started back in 1996. And we could interact and have this dialogue. We're setting the stage for content curation. Uh, and there have been a few people talking about this. We've made mention of certain platforms that enable content curation like Pinterest. So you see an image you like, you can post it to Pinterest and people can share it and it spreads that way. It's the same thing with content. If you don't share the content that we create, I hate to say it, but that, that content isn't going to get seen. I mean, certainly if you're not paying attention to what we're doing, why are we doing it? If you want to see more of one thing in particular, you vote with your attention. I have, really, it's the easiest, there's a lot to pay attention to. I understand that. I do. But as content publishers, when you don't, you know, comment on an article or share it, when you don't like a video, 
you know, not just the live video. And, and granted, we've got 160 likes right now on this live broadcast. I have no idea what this particular segment inside the video, how many likes it has. But I'm just telling you, that curation is so important for publishers. When you share, that means so much to us. Curation is the next level for publishing. You, you are the next level. You may not be creating the content, but gosh darn it, you can share it. That means a lot because it tells the publisher what they need to be creating more of. We can't read your mind. Help us. Help you. It's true. Okay, I got a couple other things. Uh, let's see here. That was that should have been six. Yeah. So uh, I'm re I'm scanning for questions here. If you got questions, feel free to ask. Did the Yahoo thing? Uh, Kodak preparing for a Chapter Eleven filing <sighs> bankruptcy. I don't think I have any. Uh, did I ever have any Kodak cameras? I had a Polaroid. I had Polaroids, not Kodak. I don't think I ever had any Kodak cameras. They're filing for a bankruptcy, guys. I don't know if you knew that. <clears throat> Ripped from the headlines, Google Android market tops 400,000 applications. That's insane. You know what? Um, I, I think it's it's great to have a variety of apps available to you, but uh, you know, given the choice uh, between a hundred thousand applications or ten, I would rather choose ten applications if those hundred thousand really sucked. Sometimes it's not about how much you have, but it's kind of the quality. I mean, imagine if those the arbitrary number I'm picking out here. Not to say that 400,000 apps is a bad thing. I think it's a great number. It's a, it's a nice number to have achieved. But what about the quality? Where's the quality metric? And I would say that for any app store. I don't care if you're talking about the iOS app store, the Android market, the, you know, if anybody still uses Ovi for Nokia and Symbian. Uh, there's BlackBerry, I guess, has got somewhat of a market. Uh, the Windows... Experience is soon going to have a marketplace for uh, apps for Windows 8, or at least that's how it's going to begin. Uh, there, of course, is the um, App Store on Mac OS X. Uh, but to me, it's never been so much about choice as much as it's been about quality of choice. If, let's just say, for argument's sake, and I, I, let me, I'm just choosing this arbitrary number, uh, 100,000 is the number. If 99% of those 100,000 apps were breakout clones, would it really be that impressive of a number? And let's say of those breakout clones, the 99% of 100,000, 50% uh, of them crashed incessantly. The number just, to me, it's, it's important. And it's nice because then you know you've got a, a thriving ecosystem. But as a user, man, I don't care. I really don't care. You can show me 10 apps that suck. They're all still going to suck. I would rather have one good app than 10 crappy ones. And I know I'm not alone. You can't sit there as a geek and say, I love crappy experiences. I, oh, when the apps crash, that's awesome. Oh, no, you know it's a good one because it crashes. You, as a self-respecting geek, cannot sit there and tell me that you would rather have 10 crappy apps instead of one good one. And that's relative. What you believe is good is going to be different from what I believe is good, right? But it's got to be good. I don't care how many you have. If all of them suck, it's irrelevant. More apps. Yes, more good apps, better. Yeah, craps, that's what we should call them. I don't care how many apps. Do you, do you know how many crappy apps are in the uh, iTunes App Store? This isn't about Android, people. 
It isn't. There's a lot of sh crappy apps in, in iTunes. I probably should have said that in the video, but if they're watching TLDR, they'll figure it out. The whole full episode. <clears throat> Locker Gnome and Chris Perillo have helped me be more knowledgeable. I said knowledgeable. I don't know what that means. Uh, about tech than many younger people I know. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Are you saying that you're older and I'm younger? Hmm. Chris, I have a question. Well, KevCore0222, you just wasted your opportunity. Google Plus Hangout today? Uh, I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. We do? We don't really have... Oh, we have a date. I get to watch The Notebook. And I don't mean the computer. There is a movie called The Notebook. That I purchased on Amazon and tried to return after I realized I could have seen it for free. Mm. <laughs> I did a video on this uh, last week talking about renting versus owning, as a matter of fact. So, What technology or device will define 2012? Uh, I don't know. I, people are all uh, a flutter over uh, Ultrabooks, but any good Ultrabook is, remains to be seen. With phones becoming more and more powerful, do you think desktops will ever become obsolete? Dylan McGreevy, I did answer that question already. It is a good one. And, and I only say I answered this question before, not to be rude, but just to let you know that you could search for the video and find it. Where'd the QR code go? Just like I said yesterday and the day before that and the day before that, and I know you're watching IT Wins Web Show 1, so you have no excuse. It's on vacation in the Bahamas right now. Don't look too excited, says Fran Japan Man. Sup, bruh, says Alex Studio. Sup? That was a really... Oh, I guess they wanted to ask the question. All right, let's see what, we, uh, what else we can rip from the headlines. Um, if we can eke out one more question to answer here, I think we'll be good. We talked about content cur curation. Uh, the case of the unfortunate underscore. Mm -mm. File sharing rec... Oh, this is a neat, neat one. So you like BitTorrent, and you use torrents all the time to share things that you can share and be proud about sharing, like Linux distributions, potentially uh, albums that are distributed by way of BitTorrent. This protocol, really a benign uh, protocol. I have no problem with BitTorrent inherently. Uh, I, I do have a problem if you're circumventing a system in, in stealing. Uh, that is my bigger issue with that. Uh, but I think you'd be uh, interested in knowing uh, that over on Torrent Freak, which is pretty much the definitive blog for all things Torrent, uh, ripped from the headlines, file sharing recognized as an official religion in Sweden. File sharing is a religion now. <laughs> and I got to tell you, out of all the religions out there, um, that's a pretty good one to join, I think. I don't know how they pulled it off. Uh, would you move to a different country? Uh, based on religion. That's not far-fetched, by the way. That's one of the reasons why America was populated by Europeans. It's not that, you know, Europeans discovered America. It was here, and many people were living here long before the Europeans figured it out. Uh, we were escaping persecution. And if you feel so strongly about file sharing, maybe you could move to Sweden. It, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I think it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, and I don't know if you knew that. It's now officially a religion. Witty Sparrow says torrents are illegal in New Zealand. See, that's not right. I, I don't think, I mean, by banning a, a torrent, I mean, it's, it's benign in and of itself. It's, it's, it's a protocol. It's, it, you know, it's a way to get information from point A to point B, and it's actually a pretty intelligent way of doing it. Uh, I, I think too many governments don't understand technology, including America's government, by the way. I'm not saying that we would escape that. So, uh, you may want to move to Sweden. Uh, first comment on there, so what if copying stays becomes a felony in Sweden? Will they claim Holocaust? Uh, discrimination on beliefs? I really want to see where this is going. Nothing to download because only uh, blank and rub rubbish comes from Hollywood. He he. Finally, some real entertainment, says 123 Mache. Peter DOA1 does note that you could be a Jedi in the UK. Well, you know what? I I would probably, if I'd be a Jedi, I totally would be a Jedi. Really? 
you know, the only thing I'm missing is a lightsaber. I'm missing a lightsaber. That's the only thing keeping me from being a Jedi. I was, trying to, I was trying to drop subtle hints, but apparently I put them here. I don't think. Here, hang on. I got to pick the right one. Here we go. Okay. So uh, I don't live in the UK, uh, but I, you know, I, I can't imagine moving the. Ah! Ooh, it's hot. Got to be careful with the lightsaber here. Let me turn it off. Okay, it's off now. Uh, you know, I, if I felt so strongly about a religion, I would move. I would. To be with those who are, are like me. But I, I don't really follow any religion. It'd be fun to be a Jedi, but uh, again, religion is just kind of... Uh, it looks like Mr. Hunt Jim's uh, says, Jedi mind trick not working yet, huh? I tried, hun. I, I guess I need to practice a little more with the whole Jedi thing. Yeah. I know, that video is probably going to be a piece of Sith. I scared the blank out of you? Why did I scare the... Was it loud? Oh, did I... When I shocked myself? Any news about the Nomi's project? Not yet, but we hope to have something by the end of the week. And Diana and I are very excited about it. I think she's more excited about it than I am. We've got some plans, don't we, hon? Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, it's going to... Do a mug thing like cheers. Oh, 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 what happened? You enjoy your tea there? Mm. Why do people dislike videos? Because they have small penises. Um, 174 likes though on this video, so that's a good thing. Chris, have you heard of Sparkle Share? I have not. Uh, I've not heard of Sparkle Share. Locker Gnome should be a religion? No, no. I do not want that on my shoulders at all. I'm not a fan of religions. Um, of any kind. Uh, let's see here. I'm checking out to see if there are any headlines we can talk about before uh, uh, closing her off now that we've uh, gone over an hour here. Uh, I got to go. Cisco's alternative to Skype has been quietly killed. Disney and Comcast link up for another 10 years. Uh, why the movie industry can't innovate and the result is SOPA. Um, yeah, where are they going to go from here? I, I, I don't know how I can spin this into a separate video, but I had this conversation in a hangout the other day that didn't get recorded talking about how I upgraded, you know, from records to tapes, to tapes to CDs, CDs to, well, now it's, you know, fully digital, like electronic. What are they going to charge me for a different format? That, that makes zero sense. They've got nowhere to go. Nowhere. What are they going to do? Maybe, okay, maybe. Could I parlay that? You think I can parlay that? Uh, Cuba criticizes Twitter for Fidel death rumor. You know my response to that? Tough. Um, and granted, you know, not to offend anybody in Cuba, although I don't think you could watch it. You'd probably be shot. Not that we should joke about, you know, that, but. Uh... All cell phones in Chile must be sold unlocked from January 2nd. I think that's a genius move. Ripped from the headlines, uh, my old friend Tom Warren, who now works at The Verge, uh, and I've known him for quite some time, uh, some time, some time, uh, he's posted an article suggesting that all cell phones in Chile must be sold unlocked from January 2nd on. Genius move. I mean, honestly, can you believe that? This is, you wanna talk about legislation that should be in every country? It's that. When you buy a piece of hardware, you should be allowed to do with it whatever you can possibly do with that piece of hardware. Honestly, the fact that you can't buy as easily, or certainly as affordably, uh, unlocked phones in the United States, I think is asinine. Now it's law. Well, at least in, in Chile. And, and potentially in, in other places around the world. And, and maybe this is just uh, going to send another uh, wake-up message to other countries who aren't as, I guess, technologically as sophisticated. 
And as uh, Anton F458 notes, it's been that like that uh, for years in France. <laughs> in fact, I, that's right. When I visited France, even though I don't have an unlocked phone, I was able to jump from network to network with the same phone, my iPhone, and it was just fine. Uh, I think more countries need to pick up on this. What's so bad about that? The next thing I like to see is like what they did in, I think it was China, uh, they had a, a standardized on a single type of USB cable to eliminate a lot of that clutter. That genius freaking move. I'd been arguing uh, that needed to happen for years. So do you think that governments should be involved in some of these technology decisions, specifically in relation to hardware? It's not always horrible. Think about that. Would you want to buy a phone that was completely unlocked? I don't think anybody was saying, no, I like it locked down. No one's really going to say that, right? Jailbreaking has been shown, at least in the United States, to not be an illegal process. There's nothing illegal about jailbreaking. You own the hardware. You should be able to do with it what you want to do with it. And sometimes it may take the government to intercede. There are some dumb things that the government tries to do. <coughs> so, but... <coughs> <laughs> protect IP. <laughs> but there are some things that governments do to help their citizens. This being one of them. Unfortunately, not in the United States. Chile. And France. And maybe other countries around the world. Uh, Clothier Hacker says, I thought you were against this. Where have you been, dude? No, I, I don't jailbreak. I don't, I don't want to. That's my choice. You may want something different for you, though. Here in Portugal, we have to pay a fee to unlock from a specific carrier. In Mexico, buyers give you more money when you sell an unlocked phone. Uh, records are the best quality. Flat comes right behind in quality. It says Javelin XD44. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to this. Uh, and it will kind of... You may not remember records, like physical records that you would spin on a platter and put the needle on the record and the groove and then sound would come out. And amazing quality of sound, uh, quality that surpasses uh, MP3s in, in just about every way. Uh, I would say digital music, but sometimes you can get a digital reproduction that is almost just as good as something that you might find on a physical record. I purchased records when I was a kid. Not a lot of them though. We really weren't into uh, music in my family. Um, but I did purchase a lot of cassette tapes and then sold a lot of those cassette tapes so I could buy CDs. I still have a lot of the CDs, but then I've been getting my music digitally for quite some time. Either I'm tracking MP3s or I'm using a subscription service. And here's the thing. The music industry for years has been predicated on a model that they're going to be forced to change. And bear with me for a second here. I had to upgrade physical formats because I could only play the new format in a different player. And physically, I was limited, right? So I had to go from records to cassettes. Cassette player is not a record player. I mean, yes, they have all-in-ones. They, I, I don't even know if they did back then. I mean, they were honking. They were huge. Uh, and then I upgraded from cassette tapes to CDs. And they said, well, it's better audio quality. Yeah, I guess it was, over cassette tapes, certainly. Uh, and, and a hell of a lot more portable uh, than, you know, records, uh, less prone uh, to, to damage. And uh, certainly rewinding and fast forwarding is a lot easier to do uh, on a disc. And then went from CDs to fully digital music. So I was forced to upgrade, forced to upgrade all along because of the change in physical formats. So now we're at the day and age of, let's say, MP3, or, you know, if you want to be a purist about it, you can say FLAC. Uh, any digital audio format. That's the day we're in now. How is the music industry going to change? Where do they have to go from here? Another electronic format? Oh yeah, that's going to fly. How, where are they going to go? We, we, they've run out of, of room. There's nowhere. What are they going to do? <sighs> They're in big trouble. You know, do I have the answer? You know, my answers may not, you know, be in line with everybody else's answers. 
I've been a huge fan of subscription services. That's the way I choose to digest content and music. Uh, I'm happy to pay for the media, uh, but the idea of repaying for digital media is asinine. No one, no one's going to do that. We kind of got away with it for a while, you know, where you'd buy one DRM format for that was restricted in this way, and then you bought another DRM format that was restricted in another way, and then another one that was unlocked. But that that was still a kludge. Uh, I, I, I don't know where they're going to go from here. I, I really don't. You can't force an upgrade when we're talking about something that is purely digital. I mean, you can't argue that, well, the quality of the version of this song is far better than the quality that we had released before. Not, not really. I mean, maybe audio files could tell the difference, but 99% of the galaxy? No, they're not going to hear the difference. I, I could barely hear a difference between a FLAC recording and an MP3. Barely. So where are we going to go? JRN Wire says brain-based music, so maybe we get it pumped directly into our brain, bypassing our ears. That's a possibility. I don't know if I'd be wanting to pay more for that. Uh, but the idea of upgrading existing technology that's purely digital to get the same thing in another digital format is uh, its not going to fly. The music industry is run out of runway. They're done. Done. Where do we go from here? It's time to get creative, I'd say. And I don't just mean by people who are artists. I want to support artists. But uh, it ain't going to be the way the music industry wants me to support them. And that doesn't mean resorting to piracy either. I'll pay money. And believe you me, I've paid enough money for half the albums I've owned. Do you know how many copies of The Best of Doors I've owned? Going all the way back to uh, cassettes? Insane. We will see. We will see. Where does the music industry go from here? I do not know. Uh, Blu-ray format says Knowles 217. That is true. Uh, Chris is a cigarette, says New 921. I am not. I am not a cigarette. Did you see that? See what New 921 typed? He looked. He said, Chris is a cigarette. I don't get it. Well, he used, he used the slang term for cigarette in the UK. Um, I don't know. Uh, Chris, I cannot find you on Instagram. Then you are spelling my name incorrectly, because believe me, I am there. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the shares, the plus ones, the everythings, the subscribing to the Locker Gnome email newsletter. Uh, you know, you could uh, more uh, easily find me on Twitter. And, oh, I didn't even share it. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna... I just shared the link to the live episode on Twitter. I'm also going to post it on Facebook. I'm also going to post it. A plus one on Google Plus. Only the plus one on Google... <laughs> this is kind of funny. I'm sharing the live video to the show as I'm winding down. Uh, okay. There we go. It's now share. <laughs> See? Put my money where my mouth is, even though it took no money to do. Uh, I've officially... So, uh, welcome to all of you who are watching this video, as I just teased it out on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus, but you missed it by an hour. 3 p.m. Pacific. Okay? But you can watch it after it's been recorded. The link will still work. We shall see. I've been saying that a lot, really. We sh I don't know why. Who do I think I am, Yoda? A whole lot, a whole lot of Jedi going on around here today. Ow! <laughs> I hurt my. I really. That was a genuine hurt. My finger. That's the sore one that the tendon's broken or whatever on. That really hurt. Okay. Enough playing with the toys. Sorry. That was quick. Well, I'm glad to help uh, let time fly. Uh, do you think Rim is going to survive this year? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good one. That's a pretty good joke. Rim. <laughs> uh, I feel sorry for all two people who bought the playbook. I was not one of them. So, uh, thank you for joining us, uh, even though it may have been late. Uh, that, that was more of a scheduling conflict on your part because we announced it a long while ago. It's just I forgot to share it till the end of the video. Word of the day uh, is, what, what should we do for the word of the day? Um, you know, people can start Google Hangouts on these videos too. Did you know that? Oh, really? 
you watch with your friends start a Google Plus Hangout. You can watch the live video with your friends, and then you can comment in your own channel, you know, like I was watching a Hangout. You know, I could also, you know what would be interesting is rebroadcasting a live broadcast of this broadcast as a Google Plus Hangout. That would be weird, dude. I don't know if YouTube, it would probably explode the internets. That's like Googling the word Google. Like you will, you will break the internet. <laughs> don't do it. I'm serious. Don't do it. I'm kidding. I'm serious. <laughs> uh, carrot was the, the word at the beginning. Uh, patty cake. There we go. Red channel. That is a great word. Patty cake is the official tail end word. If you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Uh, mugs up or whatever. I'm going to go now, do my thing, whatever that thing is. Uh, you're free to join us in the chat room, live.perillo.com. Did not receive 300 likes, so therefore we're not doing a Google Plus Hangout. Sorry about that. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll have 300 likes. Get your friends to watch this. Uh, that's how we're going to do it, uh, and I think that's the bar. bar. If we reach 300 likes, uh, we can do a Google Plus Hangout, but uh, didn't get 300. Got 200. Pretty good for the, the live video feed. You guys should be liking the other videos that we record in conjunction th with this one. When they're uploaded, like, share, comment, plus one. Get them out there. What you like, you've got to let people know. You are the curator. You. You determine how this is going to end. Not me. I'm just a talking head. Barely at that. All right, I'll, uh, I'll let you go. I know you're tired of me, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, subscribe to the Locker Gnome email newsletter if you haven't already. Send backlinks our way to lockernome.com. And until next time, we'll see you later.